Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, you know, we had some had some decent performances the last few weeks, but obviously results matter, don't they? So yeah, that was an awesome day. I'm proud of the defensive performance today. Yeah, it's the best we've been all year, absolutely. You know, hard work pays off and they've been they've been ripping him for a series of weeks now. Um, and we said if we just stopped giving we defended really well last week, we can see five points. First try wasn't a try, it should have been shots off. Um, and the last one up to give away. And then other than that, because we give away so much, we put so much fatigue into ourselves. But actually, we defended really well for large periods last week. Um, but we just we didn't get off to a good start. We give away too much. But we said as soon as we have an equal share of the ball and an equal share of fatigue across the pitch, and put some fatigue into the opposition, you know, we think we'll get some better performances and better results. What Jared Bassett was amazing today. What do you think? Oh, it's hard to pick out individuals at the minute. I thought they were all really good. Um, we actually weren't that great the second half um, with the ball. It's I thought we've done some, our attack's been okay in recent weeks. I think the combination, obviously Josh has been excellent, Dean coming back in, Campo, alongside always been really good. We were really poor today actually, we were really clunky with the ball. Um, I thought we overplayed early on. Uh, I thought we felt we had to score and things like that. Uh, but we certainly overplayed, but defensively, the way we scrambled won us that game. It nudges over the line, so yeah, Bassett was good. Bassett's been good all year. I don't think he's had a bad game since he's, he comes to the club. Stayed him at half time. Uh, same as what we did when we were losing, like, we just kept showing them the good pictures and how they defended for each other. Um, we had like eight or nine incredible defensive clips there where they scrambled for each other. We were connected, presenting good pictures, not giving them the pictures which they'd been previewing on us and expecting to see. Stayed in system, stayed patient. The work under the ball for the middles. The middles were unbelievable. They were class. Keno, Sammy Davis, Dean, all of them. Stocky, the interchange, obviously with Butler. Uh, and Jonesy, they were all excellent, mate. They're all really, really good. So just when, pumped them up. Yeah, you pump them up, but you don't physically show them. Anything. You show them video, no? Yeah. Get half time. Yeah, yeah. 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 And the whole group, or just individual? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just try and calm everyone down and, and show them the evidence. You know, to suggest that they can do it and they're doing some good things. It's hard, isn't it, when you're in the mixer? I've got the best view here. It's unbelievable. It's like a bird's eye view. You can see the play unfolding, forward and folds, but like, down there in the mixer, it's tough. To see the good things you do and sometimes the poor things you're doing, so it's just a really easy snapshot to, to give them that supportive evidence. All the fix up, there are no fix ups today. In, in defensively, we just showed them all the positive stuff. Go out there and do that again, you'll win the game. Was that much different to some of the narrow defeats? Was there much in it? Uh, no, that's I felt at one point when they scored, I thought, is this going to be another lead? <laughs> so, no, I thought we were excellent against Leeds, so ah. Very similar emotions, wasn't it? Similar performance level, but we got the result this time and we didn't last time. How were you feeling in those last five, ten minutes when you didn't have much good ball in their half? You, you, can they keep defending like this for another three, four, five sets? Yeah, we worried because we, we put so much fatigue into ourselves in that second half and we didn't have uh, our first share of the ball and they were they were good. They picked up, didn't they? Absolutely, they marched us that first set and nearly scored. So we were, we were hanging on for dear life. We had all kinds going on today with HIAs and uh, two green cards, which hurt us, cost us. Uh, that's when they scored their, their try with Sarte. Other than that, honestly, I, I felt like we could have defended most of the day. It's green card, so it's, I just think oh, it's tough, mate. Like, it's a time-wasting tactic, isn't it? Some people go down with an injury and when there's a genuine injury and you get green carded, it's the rule, I'm not moaning about that, it's just, it's tough to, to take, you know, so you defended that out with 12. It's only two minutes, don't get me wrong, but against a quality team with fatigue into us. And then the second one with, um, with when Thiessen went off, that proved costly. That proved costly. Without that, I thought we'd have defended them all day. Did you defend that set with 12 men when Thiessen came on? Yes. Yeah. So why, at what point, why couldn't you use the 18th round? On the, on the green card? Yeah. No, you've you got to play with 12. On the green card. So we got done twice now. I don't think we've been hit with it all year and we got hit because twice the, with it. They're, they're suspicious of what? Whether he's playing. Yeah, and I agree so with how it. How do you feel about it? It's difficult, isn't it, when it's genuine um, and it punishes you. So there's a couple of genuine checks on that. But it's, listen, it's no one's blame. That's the rules and how, how it should be. Um, so, But the second one was just that little bit too much. Particularly of the way we were playing as well. I invited them on to us, definitely. Um, 
we, we didn't do what we were told to do with the ball. We, we were getting nothing from their edges. They defended us really well. We wanted to stay through the middle, and they wanted to stay through the middle as well. But every time we went wide, we looked clunky. We turned the ball over poorly, cheaply at times. Uh, we didn't want the halves hands on the ball as much in that second half. Um, we did do that, so we just got to look at that. Well, that's that's experience as well. I think I felt we were tightening up actually a little bit. But once again, um, similar to the whole game where you think you're going to win and just do things that you're not supposed to do. Uh, not that I can see no. He didn't. No, it was just um, I feel awful for the the fellow. We had a, a change up our sleeve with him going to the right centre and Ethan coming into the back row and possibly pushing Sid up to prop for a spell. But um, it, the way the game was in the balance, you'd be foolish to make a change to your edge. Our edge D was excellent on on the right hand side. We they had nothing there, so. Um, it was tough. I wanted Robbie's legs on there and his his energy, obviously, but um, to change a combination, defensive combination, I would probably have been a bit foolish, really. So unless it was forced on me, I wasn't going to do it. Well, at the end there, did you kind of? You know, there's been a couple of times this year where you thought you were going to get Vicky's and Philip at death. Did you? What, were you thinking about that? Were you thinking that hold on, hold on, or was it more you were just thinking play by play? You know, like. You know? Oh, hang on! Like yeah. we were so tired out there. And we hadn't played well, and we knew it, and it would absorb so much deep. They're so much bigger than us, man for man. And we dealt with them really well the first half. And we had a middle out there in, at the end of the first half. If you look at it, I'm not sure we had a, a middle on there over six foot. Um, and in, you had Teeson on there, you had uh, Jacob Jones out there. We had to put Sam Davis up to prop. Uh, but it suited us, our mobility, to just deal with our big man. Um, and we just left um, a ball carrier on there in Marcus Stock. Um, Sorry, and, and Robbie Butler as well. So that was where it went. It worked for us. It gave us legs. And you were down legs. to 12 for a total of four minutes in the game? Uh, it would have been that, yeah. And you didn't even use your whole bench. <laughs> you got your second win of the year. That's pretty... Yeah, but it, <laughs> at the same time, that, that fourth interchange at, at times can be a luxury and it's like where you use it. Yeah, if you've got a point of difference player, like an impact player, or it might be something that's used con more contextually, or it might be someone who covers back row, centre, wing, whatever it may be. We had a plan to use Robbie's story today, but it just didn't map out that way. Whereas normally you, you're going to leave your loose forward or you or your nine to, on to just do the, the game minutes, really. So you only really need three middles. Were you concerned when he went off? Massively. Given his head oh, massively. So we came in at half time, we had used three subs, and Sam Davis went down. We, he had severe migraine, he was getting blurred vision. Um, which Sammy has time again with real bad migraines. So I had to bring him off before he went out. So we had to make the change, but Dean Pratt is straight back on. Dean Pratt comes off after one minute. So if he would have failed his HIA, he would have used two subs in one minute after doing 40 minutes with, with just three. That would have been nuts and it would have possibly proved costly as well. Mike, it's it's Dean, oh, absolutely. I mean, they're all important. They all, yeah. They've all got the role to play, but the way we, pl way we try and play... Uh, with that kind of third half, if you like, he's, he's instrumental. Yeah. Right, with, that, with only like seven weeks left, um, normally you'd be planning a future and you'd be planning for next season. Um, I know that the, the Super League contracts are null and void when you're not in the Super League. So do you have a dressing room of people who you know where they're going to be next year or not? Do I, I don't know where they're going to be now. It's, we're in a situation. We still don't even know if there's a parachute payment. How can you plan? That's crazy. So you, you've always had a parachute payment in for probably around ten years now. That's this value. Then it went to this value, and now it's we don't because you don't even know how many teams are going to go down. You got a structure where two teams might come down. So how's the parachute payment work? We, we the blokes in there have got bills to pay. Futures. And it needs sorting. Because Normally, at this stage, we'd know several players are going. Yep. Is it a coincidence that the only person we know who's leaving is someone who's not going to play? Have the lads between them said we're going to keep it private? Yeah, there's some players who've been moving on. Have they done? Have they said as a squad we're going? We've decided we're going to not say. No, no, we're just. It's, it's timing, isn't it? Of, of when to release things. I mean, for me, we're all in this mess together, aren't we? And we'll stick in it together till the end, and it's going to be more unsettling, isn't it, if you've got information of players leaving? He's doing it at the end of the year. Well, so, have you asked the players to not 
say and the teams they've signed for. Well, just as a club, you would just it's just common sense, isn't it? Yeah, well, things get good. things get out, don't. Yeah, but yeah. clubs have respect for each other. You speak to each other. When do you want to put it out? We'll put it out at the end of the year. Great. That's it. End of story. You know, I, other clubs obviously want to push their players and things like that. If you're bringing in a player who's on a marquee player on ridiculous money, you, you use that as an advertising tool. That's not happening with us, is it? So I don't see any need to, to release any of that stuff. Um, this security in knowing that we are going to go down next year, the insecurity on how it all looks and what income the club will have and, and how we'll be set up. That's, well, that's not a surprise you, to anyone, is it? No. How does it make you feel knowing now that you've the work you've done with a lot of those players has proved that they can play in Super League. They're good enough. How does that make you feel? Uh, well, it's. I mean, we've only won two games. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's not. In a, in a lot more oh, we, yeah, we have. We have hundred um, percent. It's. It's not necessarily about that. It's not why. I'm. I'm really upset because we've got all these players to a certain level and they're going to move on. Like, players have got to look after themselves. Like, there's insecurity over us as a club that has been for a long time I what you know the IMG is meant to come in and it's meant to say that this is a securing team so you can plan it's done the opposite to us it's an absolute opposite to us and we knew that last year so it's not been easy for many reasons this season but what words have praised you for the, the mentality of your players this late on in the season to still be given amazing yeah honestly the lads like I, you know, I never slam the lads, obviously. I mean, behind closed doors, they absolutely tear into them at times. Some of the stuff's unacceptable. Some of the stuff we're giving away is, is, is really poor. But that's just their is, you know. We're all in this together. And, and how they respond and how they just keep going, how they dig in for each other is just remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. So um, I'm always proud of them. I'm really proud of them, obviously, at the minute because it's that time of year, isn't it, with, with insecurities and stuff like that. So they can just throw the towel in and just get through the end of the year or we can try and enjoy it but you know what we can do is, is put in big performances um, and have the integrity to kind of see it through um, which is I think is important for the competition the competition's not give us a good fall this year um, been pretty poor how it's all unfolded but you know we'll make sure we you know present ourselves the best way possible every week right to the end of the year Do you ever allow yourself to think what if you'd had the spine of the the five players you expected in, yeah. in February do you ever I don't think you've ever had more than three yeah, the, yeah a little yeah. bit yeah like we we brought Campo in he's, he's a very good player he's, he's a good player in there and he's obviously coming over just to England I mean if you look at the history of Australians coming over it takes them a year to get going so it, it might have been a case we didn't get going at all this year but we needed it because obviously he's here on a one year contract and um, Jack's back fit now and he's playing really really well He's controlling the team around, which takes a lot of pressure off the team. Very composed. Um, obviously, Dean missing that spell. We all knew Dean was a top player, didn't we, from his performance in the Championship. Never played Super League. He's shown he can play that level. Um, and, you know, Alex Walker was doing some good stuff as well, but then Josh has come in um, and, and been excellent as well. So, yeah, there is there's definitely a, a case of not what could have been. I'm not saying we'd have won 10 games like we did last time because it was a heavier transition. We had to go. We were. We were already full time last time, so it was an easy transition. We only we only recruited two or three players last time, quality players on top of what we had. But this year was a renegotiating thirty new contracts and hybrid in and part time players with full time and whatnot. So, but I certainly think we'd have a couple more wins on the board if we'd have had Beanag, Leyland, Natoli at the start of the year, Campagnolo for a full season. Uh, I do, yeah. Rooks look very comfortable, isn't he? Been brilliant, yeah. He's just a spark, isn't he? Doesn't always get everything right, um, but he's just he, his spark is incredible, isn't it? And it's what we've needed, obviously. We've he's come into a team that's been um, on the end of what 15 losses, 16 losses, whatever it is, um, and beaten them quite badly at times. And you need them players why you need a squad to come in and energise. It's what Jack's done, it's what Rocky's done. Um, we'll be looking to Emmanuel to do that. He's Back next week, and Lewis Brienet. So, I mean, Paul, we just keep recycling energy. But Rocky's been class here. Yeah.